is going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo himself, and we are back with the Bolo Show. That's right, New Comic Book Day is back. So, of course, the Bolo Show is back, and we're talking about first appearances, Mary and Buzz, and Jack's long-term play. Man, it feels great to be back, doesn't it? Oh, man, absolutely. And here's the thing. We never left. We've been here on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel throughout the pandemic, delivering the heat, delivering new content. But I have to admit, you know, something, there's been a hole. There's been something missing. Uh, it's obviously without new comics, we haven't had the Bolo show. And it is great to get back and talk about the newest releases of comics, the good, the bad, the ugly. What are you talking about on social media? And everything in between and all that's great about comics. It's back, baby. Yeah, it's back. There's some bumps in the road, but it's back. So the, the books are kind of shuffled around. Some are getting more, some are getting less. Some are coming a week later. And then, but either way, we're back with the Bolo Show. And we're going to start right now with the first appearances. And the first book we're talking about first appearances this week is probably the big one from Marvel. And we're talking about that big old Venom number 25. This had a lot of anticipation waiting on it. And then we had the whole stop in distribution. A lot of news kept going back and forth. A bunch of covers. Gabe, I'm surprised Marvel didn't create a couple more covers at the time they had. But either way, Venom number 25. This was actually a really good book. I enjoyed it. Tell us more about this one, Jack. Yeah, really good book. And you mentioned it when we were talking off air before we jumped on. And I think it's really the best way to assess this book. And, it's like, I, and I like when writers take the time to do this. But it was almost as if Donnie Cates kind of foresaw this situation and was really able to almost catch us up to where we are in the story. So we didn't feel like there had this huge gap because that's something I've been worried about um, is, you know, we, it's already sometimes tough to keep up with weekly books when you're reading several and it, you're not getting the next issue in a given series for a month. So having the break that we've had, I, I worry that certain series would lose their momentum. Donnie Cates did a great job effortlessly bringing us in, you know, bringing us back to a little bit about what's happened and a look ahead to the future. And that's why this book lands in the first appearance section. Now, this is a book that fits in every category of, of this list. And, and honestly, I could have talked about it in the long-term play of the week section as well. But the reality is, I don't know if this is the first appearance. I'm not going to sit here <laughs> and play that game, though, Brian. So that's why we put it on the list. Now, I did make the note in Cameo. And I love the comment from uh, somebody on Instagram who said, what's a Cameo? Um, because I totally, I totally agree, but I had to put it in, in there because I knew when I, when I first looked at the PDF, I said, oh no, there's going to be a problem because this appearance, which was getting marketed and a, a retailer even did a store exclusive featuring virus on the cover. It's an homage to, uh, the second appearance or what's commonly called the first appearance of war machine. But, uh, they, when I saw that, I knew like the market's going to get on this book. It's going to get called the first appearance, but there's also going to be a community that's going to backlash against that. Now we knew that virus's first appearance was supposed to come in the new comic book day issue. That's long been talked about. And there's been a lot of uh, excitement for virus because, Hey, how can you blame anybody? Look at the history of Donnie Kate's characters. The guy makes everything pop. He makes issues from years ago, suddenly pop on the back issue market. He makes first appearances of swords shoot up in value anything can happen with the guy so um i'm not surprised we're gonna have to pay attention to this book and see what happens but a lot of variants like you mentioned brian i had to put several down on the graphic rather than listing out all the ones that are hot because there's so many you've got that black blank variant uh the bagley remastered the amazing variant anybody who's a kid from the 90s remembers that poster that goes with that variant uh, that also by the way that poster is in ASM 365, first appearance of Spider-Man 2099. That's an insert in that book. But, you know, the Funko variant is getting a lot of attention. The Retailer Summit that didn't really happen variant is getting a lot of attention. So, um, Zafino, you got a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of different books to kind of chase. So, uh, Chicharetto, I could keep going. There's just a lot of them. That, and you kind of got to pick your person. So, Brian, what is your favorite variant cover of them all? I'm going to be, like, probably the most boring and i like that solid black cover oh yeah well we're big we're big fans of that right 
and it's cover price. Finding that with high grade, if you find that in high grade, and we all know Marvel paper mm-hmm. sucks so bad. So finding that, especially if you can get a nine eight and that with no color rub or any of that on there. But yeah, I'm sticking with the black cover. Yeah, so I like the Bagley just for nostalgia's sake, but I'm with you on the black cover. But you know what? I think that nine eight that you're talking about, I get what you're saying from an ROI, but I think that of the just even if you're just for your PC, but I think that's gonna be tough. What I would do is take that black. But yeah, get the sketch on there. Put it in that CBCS art label. Forget about the grade. You don't need a grade with that label. Instead, it goes in that beautiful art label. It's encapsulated. The signature is verified. The art is verified. Uh, and and, and uh, get a talented artist. They'll absolutely kill that cover. Think about all your favorites, uh, Clayton Crane or Ryan Stegman. Uh, uh, any number that have done Tyler Kirkham that have done big killer of uh, Venom covers. In the next book, we're talking about first appearances. This book's already escalating the day after release, and we're talking about that Marvel action number 10 that gives us, what, the first appearance of Yellow Hulk? Yeah, so talk about controversial. So this is what I'm, – I'm so thankful for this book, Brian, because I was looking at this list um, a few days ago, and I was like, man, you know, I don't know. First Bolo show back. I don't know if we're going to have enough to really kind of spark our interest. Our, you know, virus, okay, everybody's going to be talking about that. But then Yellow Hulk comes out of nowhere. So amazing because anytime any of these Marvel action books, these IDW children's, I shouldn't say children's, all ages releases. And again, all ages means adults too. But these all ages releases um, pop on the secondary market for any reason, whether it's character driven or variant there's always that the people that are going to hate that so there's a lot of people out there getting frustrated now at the same point we've reacted negatively when you see prices like people are paying 40 dollars for this book I, I i always think that that is an overreaction on release day to pay that kind of price you don't even know what the distribution is there could be distributors sitting with copies of this book idw could be sitting with copies of this book we've seen so often idw the day after release add copies to their website at cover price so i always think it's a knee-jerk reaction to spend that kind of money especially on a cover a yeah because you you kind of kind of let that play out but people's argument that yellow hulk debuting in this series means that it could never show up in continuity i don't think that's necessarily true um I look at it like a lottery ticket. I would, I love this book. As, Those are the same people that say in Dark Horse Star Wars. Right. Would show. never, right. Would never play out. And look where we are today and how important that stuff is. I remember years where I was going to stores and shows and just ignoring entire long boxes full of Dark Horse Star Wars. And so this may be a book like that where over time people, you know, no one pays attention to it. And then, what if Donnie Cates gets on Hulk and goes, you know what I want to do? I want to tell that yellow Hulk. Yeah, I want yellow mustard Hulk. Hulk. And, you know, and, it's, and, it, and it may never get used, right? And, and, but at the same point, uh, there's also a lot of Hulk collectors who have really kind of bought into this gray Hulk, red Hulk, um, you know, in the regular Hulk, Professor Hulk, Joe Fix-It. Uh, Amadeus Cho. Yeah, Amadeus Cho, uh, Braun, She-Hulk, and everything in between. So... I, this doesn't surprise me like a hot. Now, what's really interesting is we're not seeing the one in 10 hit eBay yet. For this series, I think very few stores would have ordered this one heavy. Now, we've talked about the Marvel Action series, but we've talked about Spider-Man. Um, and Spider-Man had Ghost Spider covers that were popular. They did a Kevin Eastman variant, high ratio. And then they hit you with those Venom variants. And once those Venom variants came out, even just the, the Venom storyline, that book took off. But the Avengers line really hasn't seen that kind of demand. So coming in at issue number 10, I don't think this one was one that like retailers were ordering heavy first week back, uh, you know, post pandemic. I think it's kind of like a perfect storm. So I think all these people that are getting angry are going to be angry for no reason. This is kind of a predictable uh, market overreaction. But I honestly think that that variant right now with the prices that are being paid for cover, if it hit the market, it could get 150 bucks. I, that would not surprise me. Um, it'll be really interesting to see. And Midtown had them for regular price, like 850. Now, and they sold out. So I think Let's whenever- Look, that one. Is, yeah, so whenever, um, whenever those start showing up in uh, people's possessions and they're able to resell them, I think that'll affect it, you know? But, and then, you know, people getting mad at things like a key collector for putting it in their first appearance, you know, in their new release thing and saying, well, that's why people are going, again, you can't blame, they're just reporting 
the information the same as we did. So, you know, people's reaction, you can't, you can't judge the source. So I, I, I do think this will be a thing of the past in two weeks and, and probably not a big deal, but it doesn't surprise me. It got hot at the same point. And the last book we're talking about on first appearances this week, Star Wars is big. And we have the return of Dr. Aphra number one again. And we also have a first appearance in here, right? Yeah. So you're getting some sort of nemesis for Dr. Aphra. Definitely we're bullish on Star Wars first appearances. Um, you know, again, not one that I would say overreact on the market. But luckily this book doesn't seem to have taken effect to that. But it, it, Star Wars first appearances at this point, I don't know that we can kind of categorize Star Wars as a different property from everything else really that Marvel's doing. Star Wars is as strong right now. Uh, the the kind of like stank from that prequel trilogy has worn off. And no matter how you feel about Rogue One or Solo or anything else, the heat, the heat is on that property more than ever, as much as ever. Um, I don't want to disrespect those who, you know, we're, we're seeing this thing in theaters as soon as it drops. But at the same point, everything's hot and the comics are finally catching up to that. So I'm not surprised that this book got some attention and having a first appearance. I'm skeptical about the series because they already did a series and it really didn't take off. It didn't kind of get a ton of attention. Now when issue number one hit being that this was a very popular character who had debuted in the Darth Vader series, there were tons of retailer exclusives, lots of ratio variants. So I'm not surprised to see like some, really cool variants for this book and that Marvel put some effort into it. What I want to see is will this book sustain readership and reader interest? And I know that there's some going to be some diehard fans from the first series because I know it had like, it had its fans uh, who are going to like hear me say this and go, you know, oh, the series was great. You know, you know people are missing out. People did miss out. Uh, the, the A lot of those early Marvel kind of debut series from, the Star Wars property kind of was before this full momentum hit. Now that this wave of momentum has hit, that's why I think it's kind of perfect that Marvel's rebooting a lot of these. Look at what happened with the Kylo Ren miniseries. Anything's possible now. So this, this is one I like. I, I think it's one that most collectors picked up. This was a great PC pickup for a lot of people. People like this character as well. I know our Patreon member at Comic Man Andy, he bought like every single cover. Yeah, I saw, He's like, I I saw that. I didn't plan post. on going that way, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that post. He got just about every cover. I was like, Afro much? <laughs> <laughs> but there it is, guys. Those are the first appearances we have for this week. Let us know in the comments, did you guys pick any of these up? Which was your favorite Venom cover as well? With that being said, we're going to move right on over into the Reader Buzz. <laughs> And then kicking us off for Reader Buzz, we have that new Aftershock book, Dead Day Number One. I read this book. I actually really enjoyed it. To me, it kind of reminded me of Walking Dead meets The Purge. And it kind of sets up a, I'll say a cliffhanger at the end. I mean, I, you kind of suspect it after the, seeing the story go out. I'm not going to spoil it. But either way, I really enjoyed this issue and looking forward to number two after picking it up and reading it. Yeah, and the Frank Avia variant is absolutely fire. It really fits his art style. And it's important to note now, we're talking about Aftershock. If you remember, Aftershock was on our, our one of our other flagship programs, 3 Up, 3 Down, where we talked about the fact that they had job postings looking for somebody to help develop their property. So I think that's kind of raised the attention level of some of their number ones. They had been getting consistent heat because they delivered quality reader buzz books. And they've also had some kind of like, exceptional art for their one and tens and they've had a good cast of like a minus to b players mixed in uh with their roster of both writers and artists so they had a lot of heat and then it kind of died out because a lot of people myself and i know you talked about it as well included we we kind of got into a rut of buying every number one that they put out and just none of them hitting for a while so i'm excited to see a lot of people were enthusiastic to check out these Aftershock releases today. Next book we're going to talk about is an Aftershock book as well. And we're talking about Disaster Inc. number one. Yeah, so I mean, same situation where it's it's really exciting to see people talking about these Aftershock number ones. Uh, it, they were pretty consistently some of the most talked about indies. And it was a little bit lighter of an indie week and there wasn't as many number one issues. Now, I, I give them a lot of credit too for the the kind of the balls to drop number one issues right now I, I just want to if it was me i'd want to wait a couple weeks but there was a lot of interest on both of those series and 
and I think, again, that has a lot to do with the fact that within the last couple of weeks, there have been more and more talk of Aftershock. Uh, you know, the, once that kind of information leaked about what they were trying to do with that job posting, you know, you had reports from Bleeding Cool, you had uh, Key Collector Alert, you had people like us talking about it. So you have people out talking about it and the, their books are now getting more attention. And again, they've always delivered on the reader bus. I haven't gotten a chance to check this book out yet. You said you hadn't as well. I would love to know from the Simpleton's Comics family, anybody who read this book, let us know. What did you think about this one? And if you read Dead Day, what do you think, which book do you think delivered more on New Comic Book Day? Yeah, I will say like I read, what, five books today and most of them were independent books. Uh, there was a trend. Know, right? There was a trend of like, I want to say weirdness, but it was kind of like these, some of these books were out there. One we're going to talk about in just a second. But I was like, great stories, but it was like so sci-fi or fantasy and horror. But, I mean, especially this next one right here, we're talking about Rogue Planet number one. You know, if Cullen Bunn's writing it, I'm wanting to pick it up and read it. And this was where we're talk just talking about. Sci-fi, horror, thriller, kind of Remind me of what was that movie? Life. Mm. Remember that with but they had whatever it was like a prequel to Venom or was right. like stretching to make it, but it doesn't take place on a spaceship. They take a spaceship to a planet and the planet's all messed up. But the book opens with like a holy crap moment that as a father I just can't imagine. But either way, Cullen Bunn definitely has his pencil all over this one. Yeah, and he's a guy who constantly delivers. When you get a book by Colin Bunn, you always know there's no chance this is going to be, like, bad. Um, you know, there's Colin Bunn books I've liked more than others. But ultimately, he's a writer that I feel pretty confident picking up any number one series that he he's delivering. Plus, he works with such a vast array of publishers, and he's really kind of mastered this kind of sci-fi horror uh, approach. And another thing about this book that it had going for it, striking – cover a a cover a that really stands out i think on, this on one we had on the last shows. call show before yep. it ended yep absolutely this was one we were really really kind of earmarking and paying attention to it'd be cool to see maybe it's happened and i'm just not aware of it but a cullen bun rick remender freaking sci-fi graphic novel mm. next one we're talking about in the reader buzz book we're getting over to boom studios with king of nowhere number two this just like i was saying reading these books it's all like all great stories, but man, it's like out there. If you ever read King of Nowhere, definitely pick up number one. Number two just came out, so there's still time to catch up. And fantastic story is this on this one as well. Yeah, this was one of my um, last additions to the list. And when I saw it originally on the new comic book day list, I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, that's a tough book where it's like number one did well it didn't do as well as several of the other boom releases. I don't necessarily think they were expecting it to, but it, it didn't hold up to some of the other books. And then it has this unfortunate lag. And it's we talked about that lag with Venom, but it's really tough to have that lag on an independent series. And it's really tough to have that lag between issues one and two. But I was stunned to see that on like Midtown, that the variants were sold out and then every cover was sold out. Um, they may have added more since then, but uh, that it had completely sold out. And then you had that trickle down effect that always happens. It's always tough to predict, right? Because then my comic shop sells out, TFAW sells out, and you have all these other places to sell out. And you don't know if it's, is it selling out because everybody's really on this book and they like it? Or is it selling out because people see it sell out at one location and then they think, oh no, this book is hot. So then they run out and buy it from another location. And only time can kind of tell. And you don't know, was the book sold out at, at distributor level? Maybe some of our retailers who watch can let us know. But, uh, you know, I, cool to see people are interested in this series. I really like Tyler Jenkins. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, you know, he's, he's the artist from Black Badge and Grass Kings. Uh, so he's done a lot of dope stuff for uh, Boom Studios. Yeah. You know, I like to compare books by mashing movies up together. This one, I would say, is almost like Zootopia meets No Country for Old Men. Remember No Country for Old Men where he's just walking around with like, uh, the cattle uh, freaking punch, the skull puncher? Well, yeah. This one that's, you got Zootopia with a bunch of crazy characters in there, but you got a guy walking around with a nail gun. <laughs> so it's it's out there, but in a good way. So definitely enjoyed reading that. Yeah. Um, also, like I said, let us know. Have you been picking this? I know we've gotten comments before, especially when we're talking about the Boom Netflix stuff. A lot of people want to see this one as, as their pick yeah. option. So um, 
I think it would be kind of expensive. I don't, you know, the effects and right. all the different characters, but it is a good one nonetheless. But moving into the next one, we're going back over to the big two for the reader buzz. And this one was Avengers number 33 that gave us Moon Knight. Yeah. And, really, around, and he was like fighting all the Avengers, right? Right. And that's really why this book is hot. This book is hot because it's a Moon Knight story. The cover is awesome. And then you, you have this cover with Moon Knight front and center. Moon Knight has always been cult popular, but his kind of cult popularity is starting to slowly rise. I'm not making the comparison because it's astronomically different, but it's very much like a Deadpool situation where as Deadpool got kind of more and more popular, it got to a point where if you put Deadpool on a cover, the cover sells. Yeah. Same Wolverine. thing. I was just about to make that comment. That was the thing to do in the 80s and 90s was to throw Wolverine on a cover and you could instantly sell a series. Uh, if Wolverine showed up in a book for five seconds, there was a time, uh, you young kiddos out there, where people collected every appearance of a character. That was like a big thing. So they wanted any time that Wolverine showed up in any book or any time that Venom showed up in any book, um, and you could never do that now. But that was often how people would collect um and so you know this is brings me back to a little bit of that where it's like you know i think if moon knight if you involve moon knight in a story and you put them front and center people are going to pick it up and re read it people are going to check it out and uh, collectors are going to be grabbing it so i think people like that cover a there was they, there was some cool variant but people like that cover a and we're going to go into the next one this is another one we're talking about indy we talked about that awa but we also call it upshot but this is upshot now number one this is where a lot of indie publishers are starting to do. They got one book that has their number one issues all within it, right? Yeah. So this is very similar to the sampler that you and I got in Baltimore that had kind of like sample pages. Um, and for them to release this uh, in this manner, I'm all about unique kind of ways of delivering comics to the comic market. It's selling out at most places. I'm also excited as, you know, we're big advocates of independent comics and, and independent comics are such an important part of comics in general. If you look at 90% of the people that are killing it for the big two, they started in independent comics. And then at the end of their careers, they'll end up back in independent comics in a power position, creating their own series and calling their, calling their shot. So, you know, we're big advocates of that. So having an independent publisher kind of hit the scene and then immediately get the sort of attention that they have is super cool. Uh, and I'm, when this release came out, there wasn't much talk at all about it. But uh, I think because of that, that's maybe why it sold out. Maybe it was a supply and demand thing. People were thinking kind of a compilation uh, book like this. Maybe it doesn't have that kind of heat. It's going to be real interesting if any of these properties ever get option, Brian, and people are chasing those first appearances. Um, a book like this could be interesting. And with that being said, we're gonna move over into the variant buzz. First one we have this week is one of those great DC cover Bs with Suicide Squad number five, right? Yeah, and this is one of those books that probably benefits from a lighter week. There are a couple on this list, but it's good to see DC cover Bs giving that kind of attention. The quality of art hasn't dipped with DC cover bees. You know, we've talked about it frequently on channel, but it's been a while um, that they just have hit a point where oversaturation and, you know, retailers who kind of order more bees than A's and you, you can see coming a mile away, which ones are going to be popular, but we're getting a lot of these ones where we're getting some lesser known artists who are consistently killing it for DC and Jeremy Roberts is an artist who had been gone for a few years from DC. Uh, and issue four got a lot of attention, was on the bolo list. Issue five, we're back from the break on the bolo list. There's a lot of people who have been kind of posting, picking up this cover. It's one of those covers that uh, maybe people missed and then they're grabbing when they kind of see it. It's like that impulse buy cover. Did you just say Julia Roberts? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's like, you no. Know, <laughs> A pretty woman doing a variant, you know. <laughs> but the next one we're talking about is another cover B and an artist that we both like, especially with those boom books. We're talking about Justice League number 45 with a Dan Mora variant, right? Yeah, people liking this book makes me smile because it was a lot of like, who's that artist? And then when you tell people like, oh, no, you definitely know that artist. That's Once in Future. That's Power Rangers. Um, 
you know, you've seen this artist throughout a lot of Boom Studios. Yeah, I mean, he's done other big two covers before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just, um, it's funny that this book kind of connected with people because then... They recognize the art style, but not sure where. Yeah, yeah. So I think that Dan Mora's kind of star is rising. He uh, was also the artist on the Terrifics number 27 that came out. Um, I think that it'll be interesting to see if um, he can continue to make a mark with DC cover bees. I feel like anything's possible because I think he's a, he's a really, he doesn't do the artwork that like knocks your socks off when you see it. And it's like, Oh my God. Like, and I, and I don't mean that from like a negative perspective. I mean, there's certain art styles, whether it's the like pinup styles of like Adam Hughes or, or uh, J. Scott Campbell, where they can get it wrong, but when they get it right, it's like, oh my God, the Shannon Mayers. Um, and then there's the the realistic styles of say a Derek Chu or In Hyuk Lee. Um, and those can kind of not, Dan Moore doesn't necessarily do that, but Dan Moore, every cover he puts out, you're like, that's a good cover. Yeah, that's a nice consistent. cover. Yeah, it just really, and you know what? It really reminds me of like old, like the eighties and nineties cover art that we kind of grew up on. Cause so I think that's why I gravitate so much to his covers where even before I was super familiar with him, I myself would see his covers and be like, I like that cover. So you know, if you're not familiar with Dan Mora, I really advocate you check out, uh, you know, some of his past work. And I think you're going to find that you probably have one or two books of his already stashed in your collection. Yeah. Especially like we've been talking a lot about the power Rangers book where he's got that variant where each 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 cover recently has been a, a, like a page in a story. Yeah. But and of course, folk lords want some future. But either way, great cover nonetheless. And another one we're going to talk about we've talked about on this channel before, and that's Jane Friesen. And we're talking about those Lolo Woods number five. So she has killed the cover bees for this entire series, and they've all they've all had this kind of like dark um, and kind of ominous look but still maintain that like real beautiful art style that Jenny Frizen is known for. They've kind of varied in popularity early on in the series. We saw some heat and then it kind of drifted. I think that's another one that benefits from this week. Not, again, not saying anything about the art. The art's friggin' amazing, but this series doesn't have crazy heat on it. Um, so it's another one where it's a standout this week for art alone. I think it'll get a lot of impulse buys. Yeah, and of course, the next one we're going to talk about, no doubt, Cover Art Alone sold this book. We're talking about that Blackwood Morning After number three with that Peach Momoko variant. This is another book that I read. And like I said, I mean, there's some weird stuff going on. I like kind of enjoyed this book, but it was like too much Harry Potter type shit going on for me. But either way, I, I did not like it. And of course, like we said, the Momoko cover, this is one of those covers that I actually did like. A lot of people on here hear me say, yeah, there's no gray area with me with Peach Momoko either. I like it or I don't like it, but this one I actually did like. It really, this is just uh, a kind of a no-brainer. This is just a book that a lot of people missed. So it's a, a situation where Peach Momoko is the unquestionable hottest artist in the game right now. So her books are getting the most attention on social media. They are getting searched for on eBay more than any other artist. Um, anything that she does is getting instant recognition and attention and you have every retailer and even subscription box service trying to kind of like market behind Peach Momoko. And I don't blame anybody who does because at the end of the day, she's the top dog right now. And we've seen this and you and I have had this conversation. Um, we've gone back and forth about Peach Momoko and we've seen this before. Uh, I, I hate to mention artists I just mentioned, but there was a wave where Adam Hughes was all anybody cared about. There was a wave where Adi Granoff was all anybody cared about. There was a wave where it was Gabrielle Delato, where it was Francesco Martina. Art Germ. Art Germ. Uh, Lucio Middleton. Perillo. Joshua Middleton. Um, all of these artists have gotten like their day in the sun. And it doesn't mean that they go away. It just means that they're not in that position like Peach is right now, where every cover she comes out with, booms. And then this is a perfect storm. It's a dark horse book. It's not getting huge, you know, like printing. Stores aren't ordering. It's a cover B. So a lot of stores that probably are ordering this book, if they weren't really aware of the peach angle of it and they weren't prepared to order heavily for that, which clearly they weren't judging the secondary market movement on this book, but it, they were just grabbing probably cover A's for their readership, you know, the, the, the pull list customers. So 
this doesn't surprise me that this book got hot. Shout out to Andy Tomberlin of the Indie Spotlight series, um, our good homie from the Simpleman's Comics family. Uh, definitely a Simpleman's Comics OG, but he he was really early on being like, hey, look at this cover. Look what this cover's doing. Talking about pre-sales. It was hitting pre-sales around $14, $15. So um, does not surprise me. And I, I we know this will end at some point, right? At some point, the market will become oversaturated with Peach Momoko. And, and also still be some other artist who will take the world by storm. And that's who everybody will be paying attention to. But for right now, people are riding that Peach Momoko wave hard. Yeah, like we've talked about that. Our art style is kind of unique, unique enough to where I either like it or I don't like it. But at some point, it's not going to be as unique because everyone's going to be having, having her do a cover. But either way, the last one we're talking about on the variant buzz this week is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Urban Legend number 23, the one in 10. This is one of my favorite covers of the week. Classic Kevin Eastman, right? Yeah, this book was this close to being the long-term play of the week. So this was a book that, out of all the books um, that were scheduled to release today, probably was my favorite long-term play. Uh, I actually have made several long-term plays personally on variants from the TMNT Urban Legends entire run. If you're not familiar, this is a reprinting of the uh, the image series that uh, you know was kind of like really low printed and not a lot of people, uh, you know, really got a hold of. And a lot of the back issues are expensive, so they they re-released it on with IDW. They got variants. Um, a lot of the variants, this series has been really ignored uh, and, and the print runs on these are small and the one in tens don't get distributed huge. So I've simply just used my common sense um, artistic eye and just looked at variants. And when I see a variant, I'm like, that looks different than turtle variants I've typically seen. And then I've jumped on it. So I think it was like issue 14. There's a cover where one of the turtles is wearing like shredders, gear and armor. That cover is an absolute ghost and, and goes for big money. So there's several of these books where it's like you can't even find supply on them. So I think this is one that it, it's done a little bit in the short term, but I, and it's sold out at most retailers, I think all retailers. But it's one that I would look at long term because we've talked about on this channel, turtle fans, fans of these types of nostalgic properties, they're collectors, true collectors. They want it. They want it all the way Brian chased his Masters of the Universe collection. There are people out there, shout out to our boy, Paul Niederhold, Paul's Problems, who are chasing these you know, different turtle books, especially these tough to find books. And it's one of those things where over time, if this thing dries up, the price is only gonna go up. Definitely, like you said, all of these variants have been Eastman, which is another cool thing, Eastman incentives. And what I liked about this book is the fact that it doesn't have the bandana. I just think that instantly makes it unique and different. And it, it very much reminded me of an Incredible Hulk cover with the rocks breaking. So I think this cover is unique enough that it, it will be popular. It'll dry up. And it's one to keep an eye out for. So if you see this at your LCS, if they got it and maybe um, people overlooked it, I would grab it if you can grab it ratio, ratio and a half even. Yeah, to me, it kind of had like a, a Nintendo game cover feel to it. Yeah, I like that. Uh, what kind of drew to me and liked it, but... There it is. That's the variant buzz section. Real quick before we get into Jack's long-term play, do us a favor, click that thumbs up button for us because it really helps us out. Again, let us know in the comments, what do you think of this list? What books did you guys pick up this week? And with that, we're going to get into Jack's long-term play. And there was, was some controversy on this, especially on Instagram, because a lot of people are like, this book came out last week. Well, a lot of shops didn't get it last week. A lot of shops got it this week. It was also listed on Midtown's list for new releases this week. But we are talking about that IDW Star Wars Adventures Clone Wars, the 1 in 100 variant, right? Right. So, yeah. Midtown listed it this week. IDW, or uh, um, TFAW shipped it this week. Um, the person I pre-ordered it from, Diamond didn't have it on his invoice last week. It, it came out this week. Right. And um, if you looked on eBay all week last week, there was only a couple copies listed. They were clearly pre-sales where the person hadn't received it and they were just listing stock imaging, which is why people were a little skittish to pay that much. And it wasn't until the one in 10 last week started really kind of picking up above ratio where people started to realize, well, if the one in 10 is going well above ratio, what about this one in 100? 
So why is it on the list? Well, it's on the list because I wanted to make you aware that this book may be showing up in your LCS today. Again, we don't make this list and I damn sure don't make a long-term play to pat myself on the back or be like, I'm the greatest comic predictor in the world. We legit, our entire strategy on Simple Men's Comics is community integrity. We're trying to give the information that we use personally. And we, yes, we get benefits along the way, but we want our, our entire community to take that journey with us. So this is one of those things where it wasn't an ego thing where I'm trying to look like, oh, look, I'm picking the hot book. Most people who watch this show on a regular basis or consume the, uh, the, the content via social media know we pick obscure books all the time in this slot. You know, we take long shots and, and we'll go against the grain nine out of 10 times. But this week, this book is called, of like usual, the AKA Mr. Bolo Long-Term Play of the Week. But I can't take all the credit. This is really both of our long-term play. And I say that because Brian and I have been making this play for a long time. We've been having this conversation about this book since the solicitation, before there was imaging. Yeah, we before there was art. Right. We immediately talked with each other um, like we do about a lot of books, but there's occasionally a book where Brian and I, I'll message him or he'll message me and we'll start talking about a book. And we don't agree a lot of times about what, what books are going to be hot. But when we do, I kind of get a feeling like, uh oh, this is going to hit with multiple audiences because we're both connecting with this that much. And I'm going to get into all of the reasons why I, I like this book, but I really did want to explain. It's not just addressing, you're always going to get Instagram hate comments, right? You're always going to get comments on the YouTube video. And, and really I, at this point I have the type of skin where that rolls right off me. I don't really care, but I did want to explain to people why we chose to pick this because I wanted to make sure you guys were aware that this book may be showing up in your LCS uh, this week, I had I haven't seen a single person who got it last week. I'm not claiming no one got it last week. I saw an invoice from a retailer who it was on their invoice, but I don't know that he got it. Um, and again, there was no market information last week. Had we done a bolo list and done a bolo show, you can damn sure believe it would have been on our list last week. And we're not looking at, at it after the fact because the reality is, Brian, how far ago did we talk about this book? Shoot, it's been a while. We talked about the whole series on Last Call and what? I mean, we've even showed it a couple times. Not only, yes, did we talk about it on the Last Call show, but on this channel, saved in our playlist, you guys can go check the back issues of Simple Men's Comics. We've got a video just for this book. Yeah, this Best a, Comics of 2020. This was a book we were so excited to, to kind of share with everybody that we thought this was going to be a, a great book to pay attention to. Now, to why it's a great book. These IDW series, they're not being paid attention to, to the same level that the Marvel series are. But either way, one of the trends that we always talk about is follow the money. There's so much money being pumped into Star Wars right now. This is a wave that we're bullish on and we're trying to ride. Even better, what area of Star Wars are they starting to move into? This Clone Wars stuff. So that's why this is a long-term play. I know this book is booming on eBay. Trust me, I'm aware of what this book is doing. Like Brian and I said, this was a book we pre-ordered. So very aware of what the secondary market is currently doing on this book. But I still think that this thing could be no telling what this book could go for, depending on what the true supply is, which I don't think we're going to know for another week or two as people start to get their online orders from places that shipped it this week. People like... Plus, it was difficult during pre-order because some people were listening as 1 in 100. There was yep. confusion whether it was a 1 in 25. I mean, it went back and forth. Yeah, and I think that's because IDW has sometimes weird requirements for getting those 100 books. They'll let you count more than one book towards the 100. I don't know if that was the case, but I think that it was, and that could have been the confusion. Like through one through, if you bought enough issues at one through five or something. Yeah, yeah. Then you qualify for a one in 100. Um, and there are a few uh, stores who did uh, variants for the book as well. So, you know, those stores will get a nice allotment, but you've already seen because as the commenters pointed out, it came, the, the cover A and the incentive came out last week, uh, the one in 10, we already know the one in 10 did. We already know what the regular book did. We already know the demand. We already know people liked it. Um, I think the entire series one through five is going to be popular. I'm bullish on the whole series. I pre-ordered variants for 
the entire series. It's it's a a I think it's going to be not only something that's going to be popular in the short term because the current wave of Star Wars is hot, but I'm very bullish that this Star Wars popularity is going to continue for the next coming years because of Disney Plus, because of also feature film. You're going to being on two platforms just is going to open things up so much, and I think once we get to the point where this Clone Wars and these 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 types of characters are popping up all over, um, you know, television and movies, people are going to look for not just the first appearances, but those high ratio variants. And, and we've seen what happens when that happens. So I love this book. This was a book, as soon as I saw the solicitation, I was paying attention to. It's a book I would even suggest you, even if you're seeing this on Thursday night, check with your LCS, see if they got it, because they might've got it this week. Um, they might not have even been expecting it. It, it, it it's one of those things where it's always worth checking. And if it, if I get one DM from somebody who says, man, thanks for letting me know. I didn't realize. And I picked up this book and I always appreciate when you guys do that. Um, it makes it worth it to have to listen to somebody who thinks like it's a ego thing or some other stupid thing like that. So um, this is a book we're excited about. I'm glad to see it doing so well, but I think that we, it could do even more down the road, long-term. It, it'll have some dips. It'll go down a little bit. But I think in the long term, this is a serious player. Yeah, I agree. And I also want to give the person I pre-ordered from popculturezone.com. He didn't get it. And within that time frame, he started seeing the prices escalate on eBay. He, true to his word, he sent it to me. Could have been a dick about it and yep. raised the price. Crippled his money, way. right? Yeah, easily. But uh, yeah, shout out to any retailer who does that. Shout out to Pop Culture Zone for sure. So, you know, we know how tough that is. I know there's a there's some pre talking about last week's sales on eBay. There's some pre-sales last week on eBay of ninety nine dollars that I'm like, yeah, we'll see if those people get that book. Yeah. Either way, that's Jack's long term play of the week. And again, let us know in the comments what do you guys think of this book? What do you think about this series? Because be honest, everything Jack said, yeah, we liked Star Wars was getting big, Clone Wars was getting big, but my driving factor for getting it and pre ordering it was I like Michael Morrissey writer of yeah. wasted space loves love that series so he's writing this as well so that's what kind of led me to it and then just talking about it as well throughout the conversation and i was like this is a great one pre-ordered issues one through five at, at the same time but great long-term play jack thank you buddy so that's going to do it for us this week on the new bolo show again click that thumbs up and if you're new here we do a lot of comic pop culture related content on this channel so be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. That way you get notified whenever videos drop because we're dropping them all the time. With This has been Brian and Jack, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo with Simple Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.